Welcome back to the Twin Spires Racing Roundtable. I'm Ashley Anderson here with James Scully and Vance Hansen to talk the Risen Star, the Saudi Cup, and we'll look ahead to Pegasus World Cup Day at Gulfstream Park. And Vance, let's start with you today. Let's talk the Risen Star and the horses that will be the top contenders in that race. Two of them will potentially be Trantum and his stablemate Hall of Fame. Both won at Fairgrounds this weekend. Hall of Fame breaking his maiden by more than 10 lanes. And then we had the Lecomte winner, Track Phantom now. Two, two for two in stakes races, but also Honor Marie will be part of the Risen Star likely as well. So which of those three runners do you think is the top contender in the Risen Star? Yeah, the race is uh, potentially uh, shaping up to be an excellent prep. Uh, and also the not only the three that you mentioned, but also uh, Sierra Leone, who was narrowly beaten in the Remsen uh, late last year. So, I mean, we could have uh, four quality runners uh, for the mile and an eighth race next month. Um, I went back and looked at the race trends of the Risen Star going back to 2010, and it's interesting that the race has not been favorable to horses making their season debut, which uh, will be the case with Sierra Leona and Honor Marie, nor previous stakes winners have done really well in this race either. The only previous stakes winner to win the Risen Star since 2010 was Gunrunner. So if both of those trends continue, I would have to think that Hall of Fame uh, might be the horse to key, key in on in the Risen Star. He did run uh, the mile and a 16th of his maiden, two-fifths of a second faster uh, than Track Phantom won the LeCompte. Granted that the pace of his maiden was a lot faster. Track Phantom got away with setting a slow pace, but uh, uh, Hall of Fame did win his maiden under wraps. He could have even run a lot faster, I thought, uh, winning the other day. So he might be the horse to key on in the Risen Star, James. Yeah, I was uh, very impressed with Hall of Fame's uh, maiden win. Second time out in his uh, debut at Churchill Downs, he broke last or he walked out of the gate last. So uh, really Im improved big time. It looks like a very promising sort for Steve Asmussen. Um, but if you're asking me right now who I like for the Risen Star, it's going to be Track Phantom. And, you know, to me, Track Phantom has you know, speed. I mean, he doesn't have to be on the lead. He wasn't on the lead in the gun runner, but he put his speed to good use in that LeCompte on Saturday, took the race right to Nash. And I've been impressed by how he has just gotten stronger and stronger in all three of his two turn uh, races today. He broke his maiden going a mile and a 16th, three starts back. He improved upon that in the gun runner. I thought he took another step forward in the LeCompte. He won with complete authority. Horses like Anna Marie and Sierra Leone, they're confirmed closers. I think uh, Track Phantom's tactical ability works in his favor. And, and even Hall of Fame, he's a little bit of a stalker. He was sitting just off the pace in that maiden win. And you're not going to face a serious class check against all these horses that uh, have stakes experience in the Risen Star. So I think I think the race is, is coming up deeper than than typical editions. And if that's the case, uh, give me a, a battle tested uh, fairgrounds loving uh, up and coming horse like Track Phantom for the Risen Star, Ashley. I agree with you on Track Phantom being that he has the stakes experience. I think long term Hall of Fame will potentially be the one to beat in the Kentucky Derby out of Steve Asmussen's barn. And he was a one point four million dollar purchase. I think track phantom was 500,000. Not that that's very cheap either. And then Sierra Leone, I was curious, you know, closed at, I think the third choice in pool three. I think the second, second individual choice. Okay. After fierceness. Individual choice. Yeah. He was 13 to one, which I thought was remarkable. Do you give him a chance in this race or do you think it's going to be track phantom? I give him a chance at the board, but I'm a little bit leery of him. He hung a little bit in the ramps and I could be wrong about him, but uh, yeah, I'll be trying to beat him for the win. Yeah. A little strange how, you know, Dornock lost the lead, I believe. Right. Or, or did Sierra Leone have lead all the way through and then. Sierra Leone blew yeah, right by like him, got stretch. up by about, yeah. he was up by at least three quarters of a length. I mean, Dornick, he hit the rail, you know, he came unglued momentarily Sierra Leone ran right by him and then he gave it up to him late. Uh, he's still learning. He's still got a lot of upside, but uh, he's a one run closer. So those types are, can be a little bit, uh, can be a little bit vulnerable sometimes uh, in a situation where I, you know, you've got a quality speed horse that could be tating things up front. We'll see how the, the prison star shapes up from a pace perspective, but Trek Phantom speed is a definite asset right now. All right, let's talk about another runner that impressed at fairgrounds this weekend, which was Saudi crown for Brad Cox. And now he's pointed toward the great, or I'm sorry, the group one Saudi cup. 
Do you think he's the horse to beat in the Saudi Cup, James? I like his chances in the race. I mean, technically, the horse to beat is going to be Wada Barrio. He's going to be favored off of his impressive uh, Breeders' Cup uh, Classic win. But Saudi Crown's a horse that really just came to hand in the second half of the season last year, missed the Triple Crown. Didn't record his first stakes win until late September in that Pennsylvania Derby. And I thought he looked much better in Louisiana than he did in any of his races last year. I think he's taken a step forward as a four-year-old for Brad Cox. I thought that race was super impressive. And I think the benefit of a tightener and that one turn, one mile and eight distance in Saudi Arabia are going to play to his advantage. And I give him a chance to beat uh, uh, White Barrio and other fans in the Saudi Cup. Yeah, Saudi Crown, uh, he's not the horse to beat, as you alluded to. White Abario is going to be in there as well, but he's a solid second or third choice probably in that race. Uh, his stock and pounce uh, style, I think, or White Abario's stock and pounce running style it has been the kind of the preferred one in the four runnings so far of the Saudi Cup, although there was a, a wire-to-wire winner last year. Um, I guess my main concern with Saudi Crown, because it's a one-turn race, you know, I don't know if the horse is going to recognize that it's a longer race than he's used to running if it were in an American race around one turn. And so my concern with him is that he might set too strong of a pace uh, and might not last the mile on an eighth uh, in the Saudi Cup. But uh, nonetheless, he figures to be a pretty tough foe to run down. And and uh, the, the track can be a little deep there, too. They haven't run really fast times there over the last four years. So it's going to be an interesting pace dynamic for sure, Ashley. Well, looking at Saudi Crown's first net speed figures, compared to Wida Barrio, I think Wida Barrio does have the edge there. Saudi Crown earned a 98 first net speed figure winning that grade three Louisiana, but he faced a 117 race rating. And when he's faced a higher race rating, he's failed to reach the winter circle. So we'll see when he faces tougher competition. I actually pretty like Derma Sotagake in this spot. And, you know, he finished a length second in the Breeders' Cup Classic to Wida Barrio, won the UAE Derby last year at one and one eighths of a mile, and then was third at the in the Saudi Derby at the Saudi Cup track. So I'm looking to a Japanese runner. Also, American horses have only won once. It's a short history in the Saudi Cup, but only won once with maximum security. So I'm looking to the Japanese runners. What do you all think? I know, James, you liked Ushba Tesoro ahead of the Breeders' Cup Classic, and he is pointed toward this race as well. What do you think? Well, I, I did like Derma Sadagate's effort in the Breeders' Cup Classic off the layoff. I think that bodes well for uh, him running well as a four-year-old man. So I'd lean towards him if I'm looking at the Japanese runners. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if the distance of the Saudi Cup uh, might be a little tad short for both of the Japanese entrants. I might be wrong about that. And, uh, you know, they might be more effective in the Dubai World Cup a, a month later. Uh, we'll see, but they certainly add intrigue to uh, already a fascinating race with White Abario and Saudi Crown going. All right, and finally, let's talk about Goldstream Park this weekend with the Pegasus World Cup Day card on Saturday. Vance, what are your early thoughts on the card? Well, the Pegasus World Cup turf got a huge boost, I thought, uh, in quality and luster with uh, the entry of the four-year-old Coolmore Philly Warm Heart who was a multiple group one winner in Europe last year. She narrowly lost to Inspiral in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. And then she made her uh, debut against Males in December in Hong Kong in the Hong Kong Voss, ran third there. Uh, nine furlongs on Saturday at Gulfstream might prove to be a, on the short side for her. So uh, sh she's a potential underlay in that spot. Of course, uh, the main focus for American racing fans will be Shug McGahee's uh, four-year-old Colt Integration, who looked marvelous uh, winning his first three sets last year, including the Virginian Derby and the Hill Prince. He made really made the impression that he's going to be a major player in the uh, older turf male division in the U.S. this year. So it's exciting to see him come back. And another horse I'd mention is one that I mentioned in this forum a month ago, King Max, uh, who uh, ran a really commendable second in the Fort Lauderdale Stakes, the uh, local prep for the uh, World Cup turf uh, in late December following a five-month layoff. So the the uh, Pegasus World Cup turf on Saturday for me is going to be very interesting, James. Yeah, I'm really excited to see integration come back. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, that cold for Shug McGahee. But uh, I, I did want to mention the main event, the $3 million Pegasus uh, World Cup Invitational. This year's field uh, did 
this year's race lacks the marquee names, perhaps from past editions, um, but it did come up as a good betting race. I mean, you're going to have a full 12 horse field, 13 were entered, including an also eligible. And there's really no standout in there. Um, you know, obviously national treasure, he'll get support for Baffert off of that. No second to Cody's wish in the Raiders cup dirt mile. You got first mission for Brad Cox off a of head second in the Clark handicap or Clark stakes at Churchill downs, even hoist the gold. He enters on the upswing for Dallas Stewart following a convincing front running win and the our mile handicap so to i've i've taken a, a quick glance at the entire 13 race program i thought the stakes races on that program last six races are all stakes most of the fields came up with like at least 10 if not 12 runners uh, a lot of competitive it's a really good betting card so i'm excited for this uh, saturday's pegasus world cup day ashley as a, a better yeah and skippy long stocking a lot of times I fade this horse, but at the distance, I think maybe could be a upsetter in the Pegasus World Cup. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> he comes up a good third last time. He could keep it yeah. more. So, yeah. <laughs> well, real quickly, too, I noticed that a little surprising Chad Brown over 26 during this Gulfstream meet, but he has quite a few runners entered on the Pegasus World Cup day card, including I'm very busy in Adamo in the Pegasus World Cup turf. He also has chili, chili flag and fluffy socks in the Philly and Mare turf. And I think maybe his best shot could be with gerrymander and the inside information stakes that field came up with in intrepid daydream who I tend to fade when I see that horse in in a stakes race. So I'm going to go with gerrymander getting the win for Chad Brown, at least one win this weekend. Are y'all surprised at all to see that he's over 26 at Gulfstream? Oh yeah. Yeah, That's I am I am a little bit, but also on the flip side, I you know, I think he really does tend to concentrate uh, mostly in New York, especially during the turf racing season. Uh, you know, I, I think his clients love winning at Aqueduct Belmont and especially Saratoga, obviously. So uh yeah, in, in some respects, yeah, you, you'd expect some of his grass runners at Gulfstream, I guess, to have performed a lot better so far to date. But, uh, yeah. But you're right. Yeah, uh, It's surprising to see him over 26. But if there's a day where he's going to get off the schneid, I mean, Saturday stakes back program, you know, he's got a barn full of stakes horses. So good. it very well could be then. Yeah, 14 runners, two also eligibles right now. I'll set the over under it. Let's say... Would you take the over or the under if I gave you six for the total, <laughs> James? Six. He's got a few in like an allowance optional claimer. So I think he'll get four wins is what I'm going to guess. I'm going under still. I mean, it's yeah. a little bit cold, Ashley. Let me see. Yeah, I know, I know. First. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, good luck to Chad Brown this week. I think he'll get, get at least one in there. So that's all the time we have today for the racing round table. We'll be back next Tuesday to talk, to recap the Pegasus world cup, and we'll be back on the twin spires jury on Thursday with our best bets and fades as well. We'll see you then.